I have been working with animals in the drinking water, which means that the first part of my PhD study was actually to find out whether they were in the drinking water or not, because nobody has ever been looking at it in Denmark. So we didn't know whether they would be present or not. I thought it was a very interesting new topic that I'd never heard about before. I was cooperating with the water supply company VCS Denmark. So we went to a lot of uh, their pipes and took samples from the fire hydrants and checked whether they were present. This is the pipes that normally run into all the houses. If we went to a normal tap and just opened the water, the flow would not be high enough to get the animals out. After the pipes have been taken off the, from the ground and we put the plugs in each end, we transport them on the trucks back to the lab and then they are cut open and I can examine what's in them, count the animals and take samples from the inner sides of the pipes. Normally you don't get the chance to have somebody just digging a hole in the ground to cut up a piece of pipe that uh, is just so you can actually examine it and investigate what's in it. So it's a unique chance to, uh, to do investigations in real uh, scale uh, environments. We found animals in the drinking water pipes leading to the houses, but we also found some in the big clean water tanks. Just a regular consumer of drinking water, I had never thought there would be uh, animals in the drinking water. When we were sampling the tanks, we actually had to empty an entire clean water tank. So there was a maximum of uh, 10 centimeters water left in the bottom. And then go into these uh, big dark tanks with our torches and search at the bottom of the tank. Whenever you find an animal, you are kind of excited when you have never uh, known that there were animals in the, those tanks before. They are one to two centimeters big at the maximum and so they don't look scary in that sense, it's not big fish. So you could say that there were two aims of the PhD. Actually, first to find out whether there were animals present in the system, and if there were any, to find out whether they posed a problem, uh, not only aesthetically, but also to human health. These samples, they uh, show how many E. coli that we have in the water. Uh, and I compare whether there is animals in the water and no animals in the water and dead animals in the water and see how E. coli uh, survives in the samples. No matter where we looked in Denmark, animals are present in drinking water systems. And then my focus was especially on the, the water louse. And whenever we made the bacteriological investigations of that, it didn't pose a problem. It was very important to us that before all the investigations were carried out and we knew whether there was a problem or whether there wasn't. Not to tell everybody about what we were doing, not to tell the people walking by when we were flushing from fire hydrants that we were looking after animals in their drinking water. People uh, don't regard animals just as a first reaction in their drinking water as something uh, good. They combine it with a bad hygiene. So until we could say that now we know that animals are living all over Denmark in the drinking water system and it's a natural thing. Then people will be informed and they can feel safe when they have sound information. It has been three very, very good years. The combination of going to the field, taking a lot of samples and working late nights and getting some results from these samples and then afterwards taking it to the lab and investigating it uh, more closely. All these things together has made it very, very interesting. Thank you.